Hi, I'm Isaac Kwek from the Table Tennis Academy. Hi, my name is Muhammad Al Qasimi. I'm from the Football Academy. Hi, I'm Fanel. I'm from the Shooting Academy. Hi, I'm Jiamin. I was from Badminton Academy. I've always wanted to be a professional football player representing my country in the international stage. And Sports School has the best facilities in Singapore for me to achieve that dream. I genuinely had a love for badminton and I was willing to make sacrifices and to work hard to see how far I can go on the world stage. Uh, one thing was physio was very convenient and accessible to me. I greatly benefited from it because I was able to get treated fast and have regular follow-ups. During my secondary one year, I was actually overseas for 40% of the time. Um, when I came back, my teacher... Uh, scheduled uh, makeup classes and makeup tests for me to catch up with my work that I missed to write what assignments I have missed and what to do when I'm overseas so that I don't fall too far behind the class. Something that's quite cool is that you get to make friends from different sports and that gives you insight to how other sports work and what it takes for them to succeed as well. I'm thankful that Singapore Sports School has arranged my Nia lecturers to conduct lessons at Singapore Sports School as this is more convenient for me to travel to my training grounds as the shooting range is located in Singapore Sports School. Sports School has taught me how to spend my time well and since I'm in boarding school, I only have the weekends to spend with my families. I have to complete my assignments as much as I can during the weekday so that I can spend more time with my family during the weekends. Sports school has definitely helped me to improve on my self-discipline and has helped me to manage my time, to balance out my sports and studies and to achieve my dreams eventually. One value Singapore Sports School has taught me was to be resilient. As I progress to more international competitions, I face more obstacles and then learn that I always have to put in my best foot forward in face of any obstacles. Um, sports school has taught me responsibility and discipline when we are forced to take ownership of our studies and our sports, even things like making sure that our dorms are clean. And responsibility and discipline is something that is really important to me now as well. The sports school isn't just a school. It's a community. Our home, our pillar of support. We have made our choice. Now, what will yours be? The sports school isn't just a sport. Isn't just a sport. <laughs> <laughs> when I smell my eyes, we want smaller or not. Good morning, parents, students, ladies, and gentlemen. Welcome to Singapore Sports School's webinar session as part of our 2022 e open house, which launches today. I am Amber Lim, a secondary four student athlete in the Badminton Academy. Over the next hour, you'll learn why we are special through a talk from our principal. We also have representative from National Youth Sports Institute to share with you how they support sports school student athletes in athlete development. You'll also hear experiences of two of our student athletes, Sabrina Lee and Maximilian Ang. We'll end the webinar with a Q&A session. You can leave your questions on the Q&A tab during the webinar session, and we'll try our best to answer you. To start the webinar, let me invite our principal, Mr. Ong Kim Soon. Mr. Ong, please. Thank you, Amber. Good morning, parents and prospective student athletes. Well, I'm glad to have many of you join us this morning. I note that not all parents are from the P6, uh, you know, where your children are in P6. I also see parents, right, who have uh, signed up uh, for children who, are, who have children in, even all the way to primary one and all the way up to sec four. So we're happy to have you join us because indeed we do take in children Right, not only at uh, SEC 1, but at the other levels. Okay, so I'll share with you very briefly how the journey of your, child, your child's journey right, towards becoming a champion and hopefully representing Singapore one day, how it could start with sports school. This is broadly the agenda and uh, what I'll share with you. Sports school was started actually in 2004, so we're 18 years now. And since the start of the school as a secondary school, we have progressed to go on to offer 
right, the post-secondary option uh, with uh, Republic Poly, we have got our International Baccalaureate uh, program as well as the Nian uh, program. This is our mission and vision. We are here to develop and to nurture learned champions with character, champions who are champion in their sports, right, champion for sports, as well as champions in life. We have a total of nine academies, right, plus one individual program. Next year onwards, we'll be starting a new academy called the Multi Sports Academy. I'll say a little bit more in a short while. For the individual program, essentially these are children who are already in the uh, National Youth Squad and they, are, they have been selected by the respective NSA. So we partner the National Sports Association to take care of the sports training. Uh, most of the time, they train outside of sports school. However, where our facility allows, if the coaches can come in to train the student athletes, uh, we are able to also support that. Uh, otherwise, these athletes, student athletes are supported through uh, for their academic as well as uh, mentorship, as well as uh, athlete development, and uh, as well as sports science are provided by the National Youth Sports Institute. This is the new Multi Sports Academy I briefly mentioned earlier. Uh, we continue to focus on long-term athlete development of these athletes and we'll provide them a broad-based training, right, focusing on the acquisition and strengthening of sports-relevant complex movement skills so that they can specialize uh, later. So the program will allow the child right, to be trained in two to three sports every year, and they'll be supported by a customized strength and conditioning program. So what kind of athletes are we looking for? We're looking for student athletes who have far exposure to multi-sports. So you don't, just, you don't have to just necessarily specialize in one, even if you do, you want to try this out, we also welcome you to apply. But more importantly, you really love playing sports and then you can choose to specialize later. Moving on, um, our KPI is not just only the academic results, although that's important as much as we are a school. Uh, what we are really looking for, uh, we are looking at athletes, uh, potential national athletes who not only love to play sports, but aspire to represent Singapore one day. Right. We are 18 years old now. We have produced a total of uh, 16 Olympians right, in the, over the last 18 years of our history. So why sports school for your child? Because we nurture champions in sports who are, right, they, are champ they, they can be medalists, right? they can champion for sports, they advocate for sports so that even when they leave sports school, they continue to play sports, they continue to speak well, they promote sports to their friends, to their families, and they become parents, right? they will continue to play sports and bring their kids up right, in a sporty, active manner, as well as to be champions in life, to do well in life, because life journey is not just about the sports right, uh, in the early years. How do we do that? And what can your child look forward to when they join sports school? They can look forward to maximizing their sports potential. Right? They can look forward to fulfilling their educational aspirations and as well as uh, have a very holistic development. So they are not just about sports, but they'll be uh, effective uh, contributing members of society. We are supported by a very good uh, sports uh, facilities, right? So other than all the wonderful facilities that you see here to support the, the sports uh, that we offer as our academy sports, we also have the National Youth Sports Institute that is co-located together with us so that your child receives services in sports like uh, phys physiology, right? Uh, physiotherapy, uh, sports psychology, performance analysis, right? strength and conditioning. Parents may be curious, right, whether do we have any cut-off points, right? We do not have any cut-off points, but that does not mean that we are not a good school, right? So we are still a very good school in Singapore. Right? Why we do not have a cut-off point? Because we do not believe that academic excellence uh, determines, is a sole determinant of success. And what we look for instead, right, is a child's sports uh, performance as well as potential. And therefore, we're prepared to take in any child, right, whether you're from the express stream, right, normal uh, academic course or normal technical course. Going forward from 2024 onwards, of course, with the removal of the uh, 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 labeling of the course, right, uh, children will come to us whether they 
uh, eligible for the G1, G2, or G3 uh, subject combination. Right? Uh, if you have the sports potential and the, uh, we are uh, happy to take you in, and not only we take you in, we are able to cater to your learning needs as well. So we are holistic, yet we do customize our support right, for your child's sports, academic, as well as student development. And we customize it by your child's uh, level of sports performance and development, right, whether is it right, at the school level, whether you are already at the national youth level, or you are uh, achieving and striving towards being a national athlete, right, we are able to customize the various uh, needs, whether it's sports training as all your uh, academic uh, progression. As you hear, as you have heard, right, uh, by some of alumni in the video earlier, uh, those who came in earlier uh, for this session. We do this not just to attain short term success, so it doesn't matter, right, if our children do not achieve at set one, set two, uh, whether they lose at the national schools games, right, or some of the youth competition. That's not the most important thing, right? We train with a view. Right, for long-term athlete development, progressing from learning to train, to training to train, and training right, to compete. So, so that your child will not uh, sustain uh, injury uh, due to overuse, due to uh, over uh, uh, stretching them too much uh, at the early age. But we do want uh, your child to continue to play sports at the highest level right, for as long as they wish to. We do this through a very tight partnership together with the NYSI, as I shared earlier, they sit right next to us. In fact, they're involved in many of our programs, right? They support us with scientific research, right? To support our training, uh, and then as well as monitor our children's uh, growth and development, as well as their sports uh, progression and development. A very strong team of uh, coaches here, right? Who are uh, well plugged in right, to the latest uh, research and training methodology. I uh, working closely with the NYSI as well as the National Youth Sports Association. Uh, sorry, the National Sports Association, so that our training methods and our progression pathway are aligned to what the NSA would like to see the athletes develop and grow. So, in terms of athletes development support, right? Um, we uh, I mentioned earlier about this close collaboration of NYSI, right? Uh, and uh, Quintin here is actually uh, from NYSI and you oversee some of the strength and conditioning training of our student athletes. In terms of sports science education, our students uh, do uh, what I would call PE plus, right? So what your child would have done in the mainstream school called physical education. Right? Over here, we call it basic sports science, right? It is a PE plus. That means not just only the physical activity, your children also have a strong foundation right, in this aspect of sports science to support their uh, sports training. And then when they progress on to uh, upper secondary, if they wish to study right, and go a bit deeper in terms of sports science, right, we also offer the exercise and sports science at the O level. Of course, this is over and above many of the other subjects right, that we offer to your child. We also have strong partnerships as well as we send our children to overseas competitions right, that is relevant and appropriate to your child's level of uh, sports training and development. In terms of academic program, uh, I mentioned earlier, we are able to cater to the whole range of academic ability. So we have the secondary school program as well as three post-secondary program, the International Baccalaureate Diploma. Right? This is uh, the IB Diploma comparable to the uh, GCA levels. It's a pre-university program. Children from this program do progress on to university education. So far, all our stu student athletes who are in this program has been running for the last eight years. All of them are eligible right, to apply for local university places as well as overseas uh, university places. We also in close partnership with two polytechnic, right, the Republic Polytechnic as well as Nian Polytechnic. We run two business diploma here. Uh, as shared in the video, the lecturers from these two poly actually come down right, to a sports school uh, uh, and actually conduct the lessons here. So it makes it very supportive, very athlete friendly, uh, um, not only in terms of uh, location, in terms of the program as well. Uh, student athletes in these two programs study from 12 to about 4.30. So they can train actually in the morning, right? And they can train in the afternoon as well as the evening. Uh, and uh, they progress uh, and they also do well, right? Uh, in their poly diploma. Same thing, right? Our poly graduates do move on, right? To uh, uh, university education, 
right? Or some of them also continue into full-time uh, sports uh, uh, commitment. So this is a simple, okay, perhaps not too simple. This is a diagrammatic representation of our uh, curriculum and uh, various pathway, how your child can be supported. Ideally, your child should be considering joining us, right? for a full true train program from the secondary program all the way to the post-secondary, right? That'll be the most ideal. Then your child have uh, 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 an extended time right, of development, right, of sports development with the school. Okay? And your child can join us, right? Uh, whether in the, uh, through the primary school uh, pathway, right? That's our P6 uh, parents who are here. Or, uh, via the midstream transfer, right? I see some secondary school parents who are here with us as well. So this is a possible pathway, okay? And you could also uh, join us for the post-secondary program. Uh, same thing after your child has taken uh, his or her O-levels, uh, you can join us midstream into our IBDP or the two poly uh, diploma program. Uh, you could also, your child could also join us from other post-secondary institution into our uh, post-sec uh, program. So what we try to do is to make sure the pathway is very porous right, for any right, uh, deserving uh, student athletes who aspire to be national champion, represent Singapore, right, to come into sports school. So our objective is not really to attract students to sports school. <laughs> our objective is actually to support right, potential national athletes right, with a, a strong academic uh, pathway as well as uh, sports development so that your child can be developed right, to achieve their full potential both in the academic as well as in the sports area while being developed holistically. How are we, in what way are we at, uh, uh, athlete friendly? Uh, in fact, uh, we are actually accredited by uh, the World uh, Academy of Sports, right? Uh, we are I think we are perhaps the only institution in Singapore that is accredited by this World Academy of Sports uh, to be uh, called an athlete-friendly education uh, center. Uh, we do this uh, through small group teaching. Right? Uh, we have a strong academy mentorship. When a child comes into the school, uh, they are uh, attached right, to a mentor right, whom uh, we like to see follow your child through right, well, for as long as the child is with us. Right? Uh, there's also a, a flexible academic structure. Uh, you can defer, you can exempt, right? Uh, you know, certain modules, right, for training or competition. And if your child misses lesson, right, either uh, because due to competition or training, right, uh, your child could keep up the learning via either via the online uh, platform or physical consultation uh, when the child comes back, right, from their uh, training, overseas training or competition. So we nurture champions in sports. Uh, Genyu is just one example. Uh, you saw earlier slides with uh, a total of 16 uh, Olympians uh, so far uh, and many other uh, world championship uh, title holders, right? Uh, came from sports school as well. So you could also be uh, champions for sports. So Dipna, uh, as much as she is also a champion in sports, right? Uh, who competed in the Olympic Games as well as uh, medal right, in the Sea Games. Uh, she actually went on right, to champion four sports. Right? She was the vice chairman of the SNOC Athletes Commission. And she also founded this uh, In My Shoes uh, campaign right? uh, uh, you know, as a social uh, effort right, to help right, uh, other children. Uh, champions in life, right? Uh, Isabel Lee was an uh, up and coming uh, uh, table tennis player. And uh, after sports school, after her, her, her poly diploma with the Republic Poly, uh, she went on to study in NUS. Uh, she uh, obtained the Public Service Commission right, uh, scholarship and she went on to pursue a career uh, with the Singapore uh, Government Service, right, as a BSc scholar. Uh, she serves today uh, with uh, MINDEF and uh, she moved to other ministries as well. We have a few other uh, PSC scholars uh, who are former graduates of sports school as well, uh, including people like Scott Ang uh, and, uh, yeah, and a few others. So our champions uh, do excel both in sports and in their academic area. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, Yan uh, who, who excel in the uh, IBDP right, the uh, IB program, 
right? She, she scored uh, 43 out of uh, 45 points uh, in the IB exam. Um, she's a reigning uh, national uh, women's squash champion, right? Uh, same thing, right, for our, the other post-secondary program, right, uh, the diploma program. Uh, a one uh, not only represented Singapore in the SEA Games, right, uh, he also uh, did well for his diploma program, right, he received a diploma in merit, right, as well as the Republic uh, Award. Boarding. So unique. Okay, boarding perhaps is not unique just to sports school, right? but uh, I, I'm aware some schools do have boarding facility, but for us, boarding is not just a facility, but it's a, it's a time where your child also learn how to manage their, their time, uh, form good habits right, to ensure that, you know, kind of put their life in order uh, so that they have more time and energy and focus on their overall uh, holistic development uh, as well as sports pursuit and academic pursuit. This is an example of uh, life, uh, you know, uh, in sports school, right? Uh, some academies may have morning training, so not all. Uh, so this is just a general uh, schedule, right? Uh, so some, some academy may have morning training. Uh, others may use the time for supervised self-study, right? And then they have breakfast, lesson, lunch, and then uh, they continue lesson. And then uh, there might be prep classes, make up lessons, right? In the afternoon, and they can rest before uh, afternoon training starts, right? And then the evening, right? They have the dinner followed by supervised self-study time. And some academies do have night training as well, right? Uh, before they take their supper, relax a little bit, right? shower, rest, and then uh, lights out. So there are three possible training slots, right? Or self-study, right? Uh, make up lesson uh, slots, right? So in a way, uh, we, we created these slots, right? To best support the different sports uh, depending on the needs of the sports. At boarding, right, your child will be provided with meals, right, uh, very nutritious meal, right, meals that are uh, endorsed, certified, supervised right, by nutritionists, both from the uh, supplier, right, Compass, as well as our uh, NYSI nutritionists, okay, and working together with our colleagues. Uh, there's laundry service, right, uh, provided for a child. Uh, people ask whether is it safe. Yes, it's definitely very safe, right. Uh, our security guards uh, post is actually sited right uh, at the uh, entrance right to the boarding. Uh, there's supervised self-study time where your child learn how to manage his or her time and learn to be self-disciplined right, in their studies. So some of the question often asked about boarding, is it compulsory? So answer is no, all right? We don't compel your child to attempt uh, stay in boarding. However, we think right, it is a good uh, opportunity uh, for your child to learn to be independent, okay? Uh, however, due to COVID-19 uh, situation, we are not able to admit everyone. So we do prioritize those who need boarding first, will get priority to stay in boarding. Right? Uh, others, when things get better, we hope to also welcome the child to come in for a boarding experience. The rooming arrangement is by gender. Right? So they're separated. Uh, and uh, there's a, also we ensure privacy and security. Right? Uh, we do have rooms that are for uh, the two, four, and six bedded uh, rooms, and uh, they are separated by gender. Can you visit your child? Uh, answer is no, not in the rooms. Right? However, right, uh, when things are better, for now, we also don't allow visitation uh, to boarding. Uh, but when things are better, we used to have parents, uh, you know, family members do come in right, uh, to meet up with their children at right, the void deck area and then they can catch up with one another uh, if they need to, right? Is the environment safe? Like I mentioned to you, it is definitely very safe, right? 24-7 security as well as CCTV monitors at right, the boarding block. So it takes a village to raise a champion. And uh, if you do believe right, in what we're doing here, right, we do welcome you right, uh, to join us. And like I mentioned earlier, the child is not only supported by a teacher or a coach, right? but uh, there's a mentor that guides your child, uh, listen to your child's uh, social emotional needs, right? the general manager and the coaches uh, look after your child, as well as if you're boarding, there's a boarding mentor uh, who looks after your child. So there are at least three adults right, whom your child can turn to right, while they're in sports school. And of course, supported by the parents, NSA, 
right? And as well as the larger uh, national sports uh, agency, such as Sports SG, SSI, and NYSI. A few operational things that often come up, and uh, therefore I was told to kind of share with you a little bit. So hopefully uh, you have less query and concerns. Right, for P6 applicants, when should you apply? Uh, answer is now. <laughs> I if you are clear, this is what you want to do. You want your child here to apply now. The first phase we intend to close by 14 of May so that you can have a, you know, we can process right the applicants uh, sooner. But does it mean that you if you can't decide now, uh, you you you'll be too late? No, I you can apply even after the 14 of May. I, but we'll do a 14 of May cut off so that we can process the first batch of applicants first, right? Meet streamers, right? those who are coming, joining us in the secondary program at the various levels, like two, like three, like four, right? Uh, or as well as the uh, post-secondary program. Uh, application is open year round. However, for the post-sec program, do apply before the start of the, the DSA, JC, or uh, early admission exercise. The reason is so that we can uh, process your application earlier and uh, our application do take a bit longer. Right? Uh, and therefore, we would like you to uh, apply before right? uh, the start of these uh, processes for the rest of the children. So as I mentioned earlier, right, for the P6 uh, student, potential student athletes, right, do apply right, before uh, 1st of May so that you can process your application earlier. You will understand why uh, it takes a bit longer for us because other than the usual selection trial uh, and perhaps even trial training, uh, we do require a medical screening so that may take a little bit of time. So uh, do apply early right, if you uh, already intend to join us. Uh, in terms of admission criteria, right, parents are concerned about uh, what, what do we look for. For sports, of course, we do look at technical skills. We look at the child's fitness. We look at more importantly, the potential for future development and motivation to join sports school. Uh, we want to see the hunger and the fire in the belly, right? And it's not just because uh, the child is here because mommy and daddy wants them to be here or they're here because just because their friends are here. They should be here because they themselves want to be here. In terms of academic consideration, like I mentioned, we do not have a cut off for PSLE but we do want your child right, for the other levels to be able to show us the ability to cope with either the secondary polytechnic or IBDP program. Secondary is straightforward. If you do so-called pass your PSLE, in other words, you do not need to uh, uh, retain or repeat your PS primary school education, but uh, you can apply to us. Uh, poly and IB diploma, we do need a certain baseline cutoff so that uh, when your child do join us, they are then able to cope with the curriculum and not come in and then end up you know, failing the course. Uh, that will not be helpful to your child. For those who are coming in uh, for individual program, in other words, your, your sports is not one of the nine uh, academy sports that we have, then uh, you do need the support of the National Sports Association right, that you are either already in the National Youth Squad or you know, they strongly support your uh, enrollment into sports school because they are the ones who need to take care of your child's uh, sports training. Uh, some parents are concerned about fees, right? The fees looks expensive, but uh, compared to you know, uh, mainstream school, uh, but you must remember these fees cover not only the academic aspect, but including the facility that your child gets to use, the coaching right, uh, services, uh, you know, including the NYSI support, uh, and many overseas uh, training competition opportunity. So if you take it all in, right, uh, actually it is very, very heavily subsidized. Right? And if you stay in boarding, okay, uh, the food that we provide, right, the boarding facility uh, is fantastic. And uh, in terms of value for money, uh, definitely uh, it is money worth it. However, right, uh, if you look at the fees and you worry uh, that I can't afford it, be assured don't need to worry, right? For these serving student athletes, right? We do offer financial assistance and scholarship programs. And we do have a high percentage, right? High percentage of our student athletes here who are enjoying 100% financial assistance. So they don't even pay uh, uh, much of this. Uh, some with uh, boarding fee, for example, we may just charge only like 10%. <laughs> All right, school fees, 100% right? subsidy means they don't pay anything. 
So do not be deterred right, by the fees. Right? Uh, our effort here is to support all deserving potential national athletes who really love sports, who really want to uh, grow and develop. So I'll end here to say that if you want to be a champion, join us right, and uh, put in an application and then we can contact you and we'll process it from uh, there. All right, uh, I will join you shortly uh, for the Q&A session. I'll hand the time now back to Amber. Thank you, Mr. Ong. During Mr. Ong's speech, you will have heard our close collaboration with National Youth Sports Institute, or NYSI in short, to enhance athlete development. Today, we have Dr. Lo Chi Yong, Deputy Director of NYSI, to share with us how NYSI supports sports school student athletes in their sporting journey. Dr. Lo, please. Hi, everyone. Hi, parents, uh, student athletes, and uh, aspiring, aspiring uh, co champions within our midst. You know. I'm just going to quickly share my deck with you and um, to sort of highlight what Mr. Dong has just said about MYSI. I, I, I know he mentioned that a few times, and uh, I think the next few slides will probably give you a clear, um, but a clearer uh, indication of what MYSI and do for your child you know, in sports school. So um, decided to use a uh, infographics to help people understand what NYSI can do better. So you could see this infographic is a very busy slide, but let's focus our attention on the running track. Uh, as a young, a young student athlete, you know, trying to um, use his first uh, attempt to get somewhere you know, in his uh, position in his sports to, to be better, to be a world champion, to, to be Olympic. But often understand that you know, it can be very, very um, daunting when it comes to trying to chart out your own career path moving forwards. So we always think that a kid running around a track will need the right amount of uh, guidance, which is represented by the floodlights here. So if you look at this, realize that as a youth athlete, there are four really important areas. You know, they consist of sports science and medicine, talent identification, good youth coaching, and athlete life management. And the rest of this infographic here, as you can see, actually surrounded by Singapore sports school heroes. So I'll just go to Kimberly for a start first. Kimberly is our, our national netball player. Uh, I think she recently just got back into the national team as well. You know? And uh, when we interviewed her for this uh, infographic, you could see that you know, she has a very strong mentality towards what she wants. And uh, in sports school, you know, this is what we do as well as part of NYSI to help sports school shape uh, the psychology, resilience of our athletes through a very specialized program under the sports science area. And you look at this little lady here taking a gun shooting. This is Martina, also a sports school alumni. Um, you could see that you know, we have quite a few options of support for her, depending on where and what she needs and during her training outcomes as well. And moving on to talent ID, I saw a lot of questions of parents asking, you know, how do my kids get in? You know, do they have to be this good, that good? You no. Know? Also want to ensure that you know, it's part of our approach to help Singapore youth athletes. You no, know? we understand that athletes are late developer and that early developer. Okay. Point here is that even if you don't get into sports school, primary six, you no, know, keep doing your sports, you no, know, because you could be a late developer and there could be other opportunities for the system to pick you up. I'm sure that um, in time to come, you know, there will be more information about how you can enter sports school halfway through you know, your, your sporting career as well, you know, even in secondary school or even outside of secondary school. Um, the next two uh, floodlights that I would really like to elaborate on is actually the athlete life. And this lady here is probably one of the uh, first few alumni that, that benefited from a good athlete life program in sports school. Uh, um, She's a table tennis player, and you can see that you know, in sports school, you know, we actually charted out her progress in her, uh, her academic as well. You know, together with NYSI, we try to make sure that she gets the, the right absence of leave to go for her competition. And I think today, you know, she's a graduate of the UNUS you know, and doing pretty well in her own area as well. Lastly, under youth coaching, you know, in sports school, I'm sure you all, Mr. Ong will have um, described to you what the training hours are, but more importantly, you get a set of dedicated coaches. And this set of dedicated coaches will actually be working with NYSI to make sure the best youth coaching methodology are employed in the school itself. So in short, you could see that if you're an athlete, you're running around, around the track, you're a youth athlete, and you're talented and sports, come to sports school, you'll be well supported through four areas. And I'm just going to move to my next slide. I think Mr. Ong also elaborated quite 
quite substantially on this. So quickly on this, you know, we provide a very comprehensive suite of sports science support. And this comprehensive suite of sports science support actually could be categorized into three different areas, train better, better, and rest better. So if you're a kid coming to sports school, these are the three areas that you will get help from sports scientists. And I'm just going to start with the train better first. You know. Under train better, your strength and conditioning are actually applied in tandem with your coaching. So not only that, we also track your pubertal status to make sure that the right amount of loading is, is implemented in your training session. So you are always uh, on the right optimized uh, progression uh, of your athletic career. Secondly, quality targeted coaching. You know, we work with the coaches a lot and a lot of the interventions are based on what the coaches would think required them. So the classic example that I could give to you is perhaps, you know, we recently worked with swimming. Uh, we tried to, to work with a coach, you know, head coach on producing or providing even a stronger culture within swimming because the coach thought it was important. So a lot of psychology work was um, actually embedded as part of that process to help the coach to create the best environment when it comes to swimming and performance culture. And under data analytics, you know, your, your kids' performance or your, your own performance will be tracked you know, either via an athlete monitoring system. And these results will then be, be found back to the coaches for them to better understand how else they can help you get to the next stage of your career. And you, you will know by now in sports school, you know, Monday to Friday, you're there, you're training, you're, you're sleeping there, you're studying there. Of course, we have to provide the best nutrition for you. Um, as part of this, you know, we, we, we really go down to the details to find out you know, in your sport what kind of food you require, what kind of energy level you, is required to help you sustain your next training load. So my, our nutritionists actually work very closely with the caterer to make sure that the food is flavorful. At the same time, it gives you the right uh, nutrients that you are, you are consuming day to day for your, your work and your training outcomes. Lastly, rest better. This is probably one of the most important elements of training, you know, and something that we don't talk about a lot. But under rest better, you know, you will know that in sports school, you get access to full-time uh, full physiotherapies. But physiotherapies are more than just there when you're injured. But a big part of the physiotherapy program is about this element called prehab. So if you're a kid coming into sports school, you know, you assess your movement competency, to try our best to make sure that if there's any um, inadequacy or inefficiency with your movement, you know, that we correct it at the start so that injuries are less prominent when, when you are ramping up your training load for your career next time. Last two will be probably quite interesting, performance planning and management. Every student or every kid that comes in the sports school will have to work with the psychologists, the GMs, you know, to start to do some performance planning and management. In other words, goal setting. And we actually track them quite intently so that we can help the athlete understand and make their own decision about where and how they should go as well moving forward in their career in, in sports school. Lastly, recovery and wellness monitoring. Um, what I say at, uh, before I start with the best better component, you know, this is one area that we often don't look enough but in Singapore sports school we really do track you know, you know, how, how your recovery and how your wellness being is like as well no? and this could be do some true subjective well-being true reflection etc and together you can see that under these three category we make sure the athlete comes in you know, to get the full comprehensive suite of support with the sports scientists involved in NYSI. So just to end off my short presentation uh, if, if you do not and still still can't see where NYSI sit you know, I want to use this illustration of a mountain. You're all probably right here right now, all the student athletes that are in this chat, you know, and you're going to take maybe six to 10 years to reach the top of the mountain. So it's, it is really a journey. It's a halfway and wherever you go next, wherever you toggle, you could see that you, know, you need agencies that are here to help you reach your best capability on, that your talent allows you to. So NYSI actually sits between two very very big agency, Singapore Sports Institute and Singapore Sports School. And these three agencies are actually here to ensure that if you need help and you need support, you know, adequate support and help moving forward to help you achieve your career success in, in the peak of the mountain or in this case, a senior national team. So using back Ken Yu as an example, you know, I just would like to show you how we have helped him. You know, he came through Singapore Sports School at a good four to six years in Singapore sports school. In between, you know, 
help on the support and YSI to make sure that both his um his academic um uh, support from sports school and his training support from uh NSA is both both met. You know? And you can see right now, you no, know, he's actually at the highest level playing for uh for circuit points, you know, playing for world championship, you no, know, and he's currently supported by the Singapore Sports Institute. So in short, if you come into Singapore Sports School you know, and you are good enough, you know, you are, you are going to be very, very well supported by the national system. So I hope I have in the short five to seven minutes explained uh, how National Youth Sports Institute is actually very much uh, part of Singapore Sports School offering. And, and uh, for, for the kids and parents, you know, um, just know that if you get in to Singapore Sports School, you'll be very well supported. But for those who have yet to get in, you know, Try to find your way around because if you're talented enough, the support will always get to you too. So I think this is pretty much my short presentation. I will stop here and pass back the time to the MC. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. Next, we have two student athletes who have been in sports school since secondary one to share their journey and experience. First, we have Sabrina Lee Ting Yi from the Badminton Academy. Sabrina is the president of the student council and is currently in her final year of the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. Sabrina, please. A very good morning to everyone. I'm Sabrina from the Badminton Academy, and it's a pleasure to be sharing with all of you for today's open house. My badminton journey first started when I joined the CCA in primary school and started playing competitively soon after. Before long, I was 12 and just like all of you, I was looking for a secondary school to go to. Although I initially did not know much about a sports school, I started to read up more about it after hearing of it and there were two things that I found really attractive. The first thing that attracted me was the unique lifestyle that I would get to experience here because it is literally the only sports school in Singapore. While most other schools would focus on the academic portion, with sports simply being our CCA, sports and studies go hand in hand over here, which brings along with many new experiences that most students in mainstream schools would not get. And I found that really exciting. The second thing that I found attractive was the IB program offered here. While it's surprising that I would come here for something related to academics, the fact that I could have a pathway straight from secondary school to this program meant that I would have more time to participate in competitions. I also prefer the IB syllabus, which allows us to learn a wider range of topics and places heavy emphasis on being aware of the issues around us. Aside from IB, our school also offers the True Train and Poly pathway, which most of my batchmates took, as well as the O and N level pathway. Having so many options to switch between, depending on my progress in sports and academics, I felt that I would not get stuck in a pathway that did not suit me. With that, I joined a sports school in 2017 and fast forward six years and many precious lifelong friendships, I am now in my final year of the IB program and I will be graduating at the end of this year. On the screen are some of my key achievements during my time here which include participating and winning at multiple competitions, as well as being appointed in leadership roles, something I would have never expected coming in as a shy secondary one student. This leads me to my next slide on why our school is so special. I think our school is very special as we have a relatively high staff to student ratio, as well as extremely dedicated staff. Most classes have a maximum of 25 students which encourages two-way communication during lessons and allows us to have a more comfortable relationship with our teachers, such that we don't feel intimidated to clarify our misunderstandings. They are also extremely understanding of our busy schedules and always try to make things easier for us, whether it's making summary notes, giving us a short break during class, or even some sweets to keep us awake during lessons. We also have two unique staff roles that I feel contribute to the support in our school. Firstly, we have a general manager who supports the coaches by ensuring that everything runs smoothly. From booking buses to ferry us to and from training 
or competitions to ensuring all logistics are taken care of for our overseas trips. Many of them would have specialized knowledge on the sport with my own general manager having played badminton competitively before. So they would know exactly what kind of support we need in our sport to make things simpler for us so that we can focus fully on our training. Secondly, each student athlete has a mentor to guide us in goal setting and give us advice as mature adults with more experience. I feel that this has been extremely beneficial for me, not only in my academic and sporting journey, but also as a person, as my mentors would care for my all-rounded development and encourage me to step out of my comfort zone, such as taking on leadership roles, which has led me to where I am today. Aside from support in terms of staff, we are likely the only school in Singapore that has an established support system for athletes. We have access to physiotherapists and many other sports scientists who focus on our emotional well-being as athletes and work with our coaches to create effective training programs that are backed by research. As I was fortunate enough to qualify for many overseas trips, I was thankful that the school was able to provide me with financial subsidies which allowed me to attend most of them. These overseas trips gave me the opportunity to gain experience from playing foreign opponents and have an idea of the international standard of play. They also put me in a situation where I was away from my parents and I had to settle laundry, food and competition schedules all on my own, which gave me some independence and space to mature from the young age of Sec 1. It also nurtured my self-discipline as some of these trips were right before the exams, so I would have to carry half a luggage of books to revise in my free time. Of course, we would not be left all on our own to struggle in our studies as the staff would arrange makeup lessons for us and even allow for test or exam deferments in special situations. For all these reasons and many more, I do not regret coming to the sports school and I highly encourage everyone to join our school to enjoy the same journey that I had, especially if you are dreaming of becoming the next Joseph Schooling or Lokian Yu. Thank you everyone for your kind attention. Thank you, Sabrina. That was inspiring. And to inspire us further, we have Maximilian Ang from the Swimming Academy who has been making waves in the water. Max holds the national record for the 2,100 meters breaststroke and won a bronze for the same event at the 2019 SEA Games. He will be competing in the upcoming SEA Games and Asian Games. Max is currently doing a diploma program jointly offered with Republic Polytechnic. Max will share with us how Sports School has supported him in achieving his dreams. Max, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Maximilian Ang, and I am a sports school student athlete in the Diploma in Sports and Leisure Management program. So this is what my journey with the Singapore Sports School looks like. I joined the sports school in 2014 under the Swimming Academy in Secondary 1. I chose this school despite being given many other options such as ACS, RI and St. Andrews because I knew that this was the right place for me to pursue my sports and studies at the same time. While having to balance sports and studies, I managed to break the under-14 national record in 2014 set by Dylan Koo. This was only my first year in sports school. Fast forward a couple of years, I started pursuing the Diploma in Sports and Leisure Management program. This is a true train program offered in collaboration with Republic Polytechnic, which means I did not need to take the O-levels. I am currently doing my internship and am looking forward to pursuing my goals in the upcoming SEA Games and Asian Games. So here are my key achievements. I was a finalist in the men's 200 meter breaststroke event at the Youth Olympic Games held in Argentina in 2018. As I mentioned earlier, I did not have to take O-levels in secondary four, which would have been in 2017. Being able to continue my momentum in swimming helped me achieve good results at the Youth Olympic Games. 
I was also a recipient of the Academic Award for being top 25% in the whole of Republic Poly. Talk about being the best in sports and studies. It's achievable. In 2019, I clinched bronze medal in the men's 200 meter breaststroke. I was also crowned the Meritorious Sports Boy of the Year. I hold multiple national records, which are namely the 200 meter and 100 meter breaststroke and the 100, 200 and 400 meter individual medley events. My latest achievement is that I have qualified and will be making my debut at the Asian Games 2022. I have been able to achieve so much because of sports school. Why is sports school so special? Sports school provides a sport-friendly environment. We have amazing facilities to accommodate both sports and studies. I am also on the extended program that allows me to stretch the completion of my diploma program so that I am able to juggle sports and studies. Every staff and teachers are understanding and also willing to go the extra mile to make sure we get our work and training done. For an example, if we go on trips or competition or training camps, the teachers will provide makeup lessons for us to ensure that we remain on track with our studies. Here in sports school, we make lifelong memories such as fun times we have in boarding, school and trainings. There are also multiple activities such as the Outward Bound Malaysia and the Thailand Sports School Games where student athletes can bond together and experience other cultures. We are basically a family. We eat, we sleep and study together. I promise you that Singapore Sports School will be the easiest, perfect and the only place for you to balance your sports and your studies. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Max, many of you who have been posting questions on the Q&A board. We have a panel of staff who will address some common questions. On the panel today, we have Mr. Ong Kim Soon, Dr. Su Chun Wei, Director of NYSI, Ms. Tan Bilian, Director of Sports, Mr. Soon Chun Boon, Director of Corporate Services, Dr. Erin Seed, Director of Student Development, Mr. Joshua Singh, Assistant Director for Boarding and Business. Sabrina and Max will also be part of the panel. If you have any questions for them, do feel free to post your questions. To facilitate the Q&A session, I would like to invite Dr. Erwin Seed, Director of Student Development. Over to you, Dr. Seed. Thank you, Amber. A very good morning to all of you. We've had many questions asked this morning, over 150, and you can see that most of them have been answered online already. So keep your questions coming. Now, we're going to have some questions that are posted a few times. So let's get right into these burning questions. Now, the first question is regarding admissions and sports. So I'll ask the Director of Sports, Ms. Tan Bilian, to answer this. And the question is, if my child is interested in a sport not offered in the school, can he be admitted? Ms. Tan, please. Yeah. Um, Mr. Ong, in his earlier briefing, actually um, highlighted that uh, in sports school, we have got academy sports and program sports. So for any of your children who are in, um, currently involved in sports, they are not currently under our list of nine academy sports, you can certainly apply under individual program. So uh, under individual program, the only difference will be the training will actually be um, done out of sports school. And uh, that will be, we will be co coordinating with the national sports associations. So um, if you're interested to apply, do indicate and uh, it, we can actually get you connected with the national sports associations because we do need endorsement from them uh, so that we can have assurance that training will be provided for. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Tan. Another question for you. Over the last two years, because of the pandemic, my child has not been able to take part in competitions, so he has no sports results to show. So what is the selection criteria for the current P6 students to enter the sports school, and will there be trials conducted? Ms. Tan, please. Yeah, um, that is indeed a, a challenge for um, sports school when it comes to um, 
determining the right fit for stu student athletes coming into sports school. Um, but all, all sports are facing the same issue. So we are looking at the current, uh, current ability. So we, we talk about um, sports skills. Um, so, so that's for current. So um, in, in fact, you can indicate if without any competition achievements, do indicate any experiences in the sports that your child uh, is currently participating in, any testimonials from the schools, uh, any of the experiences in clubs. Um, and we are also looking at future potential. So um, with, the, with the changes in the uh, SMM, we are looking to um, organize um, trials, training trials, selection trials, so that uh, our coaches can actually take a look at uh, um, the current ability of your, your child um, to see whether there is a good fit. Um, other than that, we also do consider aspiration of children. Yeah, um, so this, is, this will be the last, last step where we went during the in, uh, admission interview, um, we will have a chat with the children and, and the parents as well. So to understand uh, what are the children's uh, aspirations, dreams, goals, and also to, to understand the expectations and the concerns of the parents. Yeah. So, so in terms of uh, the whole admission process, um, we don't just look at um, what has been done. So we also do engage parents and the children. Yeah. Thanks. One more question, Ms. Tan, that a few parents have asked. How many secondary ones will the sports school be admitting next year? In a typical year annual admission, we, we can take in about 100. Uh, that's for set one. Um, but I think that for this platform, I'm seeing parents of um, uh, more than just P6 students, right? So, so sports school also admit at different entry points. So majority of the students are actually admitted uh, for set one. Um, we do midstream admission as well. So as and when um, you feel that uh, you would like to give sports school a try, uh, midstream admission for secondary, you can actually come to us at any point in time. We also admit uh, post-sec, post-secondary for our poly program and our IBDP program. So um, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Tan. There's a question on sports injuries, and it reads, athletes compete so much and train so much, so there will be a time when they will get injured. Does the school provide support for these injured athletes? Can I ask Dr. Su to answer, please? Hey, thanks, Erwin. Um, yeah, of course, there will be sports science and sport medicine support provided to the student athletes, but I think uh, very importantly, we are teaching the student athletes about you know, self-care, recovery, proper management of its own competition and training calendar. I think uh, this is a long journey, a very, very long journey. We really do not want our youth athletes uh, to get injured and burn out before they become a senior national team. So I think as part of our holistic support, uh, not just that we treat acute uh, injuries and, and issues, we also want to be able to partner with the student athletes to make sure that their career is a long and, and fruitful one. Yeah. So rest assured that they will get support. Thanks so much, Dr. Su. A question for our principal, Mr. Ong, and it's this. Is sports school focusing more on sports excellence rather than academic excellence? Mr. Ong, please. Okay. Uh, I will say uh, in terms of outcome, right, it is both. And we always tell the children, uh, when you join sports school, how much effort you put in for your sports, how do you balance sports and uh, your academic studies. Right? Uh, we always expect you to say, I'll give my 100% effort. And so in terms of outcome, definitely both. In terms of selection, right, there is a difference. Right? So we say we do not look at your academic uh, requirement as far as P6 admission not because we don't care about the academic, but because we don't want the academic results to be a stumbling block for you to join sports school. So we look at sports first, right? So there's the difference. Entrance, selection, sports first. Outcome, right? Definitely both. Uh, I'm going to surprise my people and just show you uh, data here, just to, just to show you what I mean, right? So despite not having uh, the Set one uh, academic requirement, 
you will see just taking the example of the IB program, all right, about 26 candidates, right, all of them uh, got their diploma and more than 80% scored 40 points and above. This is a very good result. They will allow the child to go into almost any university uh, courses in Singapore. And even more uh, uh, encouraging is a good 65% of them are already in the national youth or the national team. Right? And in fact, while all these who are in the national team and national youth team, almost all of them uh, actually scored 40 points and above. The only one who didn't, I think, scored 37 or 38 points. And he will still get in university. And if any affirmation, all right, the minister also said that we actually have a system that can deliver outstanding athletes with fine academic records as well. So, but if you are looking for a good school, like we always tell the parents, I tell the parents there are 100, 140 over other good secondary schools out there. But if you're looking at pursuing sports at the highest level, right, as well as balancing your academics, sports school is your best choice. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Ong. The second question, is the sports school academic syllabus the same or different from other MOE schools? And will there be full subject-based banding for the sports school in 2023? Okay. Uh, in terms of curriculum, we take reference from MOE curriculum. Uh, for the main uh, uh, subject as far as the progression and what they need to learn. As far as a specific subject, we do modify them a little bit. So for example, uh, I mentioned earlier in my sharing that we do not do the full uh, PE uh, curriculum per se because PE runs from SEC 1 to SEC 4 and all the way to JC as well. By the sports school, we do it, the basic sports science only at SEC 1, SEC 2, right? Uh, for the other subjects, for example, we do not do uh, design technology at SEC 1, SEC 2. We do not have uh, food and uh, consumer education. We do not do art and music uh, as a curriculum uh, uh, within the curriculum time. But do children, are children exposed to some of these experiences? Answer is yes. We do have arts enrichment, uh, program music enrichment that allows a child opportunity to experience this learning. So there are some customization as far as the curriculum total package, but as far as the academic core subject content, uh, we do follow the national curriculum so that the child will continue to progress and learn at a pace right, that will enable them right, to assess post-secondary education. Full subject-based pending, we will go full subject-based pending starting 2024 with the rest of the national system. However, right, we have already been doing subject-based Bending for some subjects. So, for example, English, right, mathematics, mother tongue, right, uh, even science, right, when the child comes in, depending on the child's ability, we do allow a child to take a higher level uh, subject. So, a child who comes in the NT background, however, if it's English or mathematics or science is very strong or mother tongue, we do allow them to take, a N, take it at N level. So, in terms of subject bending, we already been doing that a full subject-based spending will be implemented from 2024 onwards. Thank you, Mr. Ong, for the very comprehensive answer. There are two questions on the boarding school which the parents have asked. The first one is, how do you decide who stays in the boarding school? So, Mr. Joshua Singh, can you answer that, please? Uh, thank you, Dr. Wien. Good morning, parents and prospective uh, students. So for boarding, we understand that it's not uh, compulsory. So as long as student athletes have a need, uh, such as you are staying far away from SSP, uh, which is a um, very long traveling time, and also the sports academy training hours, some of the academy trains very early, uh, like uh, swimming and football, then uh, I think it will be important consideration for the application. Thank you. Second question is, what is the boarding arrangement for students? When do they go home on weekends? And when do they come back to boarding school? Please answer up. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rain. Okay, for boarding itself, um, when we um, assign the rooms, it's actually according to gender, sports academy, and also the academic level. And then uh, for boarders, they will actually check out on the Friday evening, and they will return on the Sunday evening. So uh, boarders actually are able to return home over the weekend to spend good quality time with their family. Thank you. Thank you. There's a question for Maximilian Ang on high performance. It reads this way. How does the sports school support high performance 
who need high performers who need to train twice a day and travel overseas many times a year. So Maximilian, you are one such student. Could you share your experience briefly? Hi everyone. So um, how I balance my sports and studies. Balancing sports and studies is never ever easy. However, think about it. If you want to be the best, you have to do things that others will not do. How I balanced my sports and studies was to have a positive mindset. If you focus on problems, you get more problems. If you focus on the positive, you get more opportunities. Not forgetting the support from the Singapore Sports School and NYSI, I was able to get help whenever I needed it. This include physiotherapy for my injuries, psychology for my mental health, and nutritionist for my diet. Balancing requires a schedule that can be packed and frustrating at times. So I usually find joy in what I do. If you have a purpose or a goal, it will remind you of what you're really here for. This is also where the SSP culture comes in. The teachers are understanding and will go the extra mile by giving makeup lessons to make sure that I catch up with my work if I miss lessons due to overseas competitions or trainings. They are all in this with us, actually. On top of that, we save a lot of traveling time when we stay in boarding. I hope that you can follow our footsteps and join our success. Thank you, fellow listeners. Thank you, Maximilian. I'd like to pose Sabrina a question. Sabrina is our president of our student council. And the question reads, besides the school's focus on sports and studies, can I ask whether the sports school has character and leadership programs? Sabrina? Thank you, Dr. C. Good morning, everyone. So just like other schools, our school has a CCE program where we have two sessions a week where our mentors would teach us values such as responsibility and integrity. And because we are a sports school, we also learn about sportsmanship, which we get to apply in our daily training and when we go for competitions. And we also have peer support training and leadership workshops to teach us how to lead with confidence and learn how to support our friends emotionally. And I feel that especially since we are a sports school, um, we have sports captains and boarding captains as well. So we have many leadership roles for student athletes to take on. And there's definitely a role for everyone here. So even if you are not a leader, there are many daily um, activities we can be in. And um, sports captains, for example, will be leading in training, and organizing events to bring their team together while boarding captains will help to raise the spirit of the boarding school. So I think there are many opportunities to lead and this will help us in our character development at the sports school. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. There's one last question that's been asked. If my son gets to secondary one at the sports school next year, what are the support systems to help him cope with entering a secondary school and staying away from home at the boarding school? So I'll answer that question. So when they first joined the sports school, our secondary one students will go through a four-day orientation program where they'll be shown all the different aspects of the school. What they will also have is a buddy program. So this buddy program is a seven-month program with a senior buddy and a junior buddy. So the senior buddies are from the student council and they are leaders who will work on a journey alongside the juniors in secondary one. So there are four official platforms where they will actually have interaction time and it's also informal platforms where they will meet at the academies, offer meals and so on. So besides the buddy program, each of our students coming to the sports school also has an academy mentor who will stay with the same student for four years from secondary one to four, and meet them at least twice a week for CCE programs and assemblies. Through this kind of interaction, the mentors will have a time to journey with the child as they grow from sec one to four, looking at social emotional issues, helping them answer questions about the school and about growing up, puberty, and so on. So there are many avenues in which we support our sports school students, many staff who deeply care for the children as they go from secondary one all the way up to the IB or the poly programs. So rest assured that we do have many support programs for your children if you decide to enlist your child in the sports school next year. Well, thank you parents for the many questions that you have posed to us. 
And we have been answering all of these questions online for you, as well as through the Q&A program. We have come to the end of our question and answer segment, and I refer you back to our MC Ember for her to close this session. Thank you, parents, and thank you, panel. Thank you, Dr. Seed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. We'll keep this webinar session on for a short while more so that we can answer your questions via the Q&A board. If you have more questions after this session, you can contact us on our hotline and email. Also, from 11.30 to 1.30, we will start a live chat session that can be accessed from our Sports School website.